Welcome to Amazing Business Radio with best-selling author and customer service and business expert, Shep Hyken. Shep will talk with some of the smartest thinkers in business to help make you more successful in your professional and personal life. This is Amazing Business Radio with Shep Hyken. Hello, everybody. It's Shep Hyken. We're back with another episode of Amazing Business Radio, and I have a great guest for you today. He has been here before. His name is Joseph a. Michelli, and he is a great speaker, an incredible author, a great consultant, and he has written books about some of the biggest, best brands, and he's here to talk about his latest book, Customer Magic. Now, before we get into the interview, a quick announcement. If you've got a story that you want to share or a question that you want answered, please reach out to me on any social media channel. I'm pretty much everywhere. If it is a question, please use the hashtag Ask Shep, and I'll answer the question right there in that social channel uh, on this show and my newsletter, The Shepherd Letter, or perhaps on my TV show, Be Amazing or Go Home. And you can find episodes on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Prime, and you can go to beamazing.tv. That's beamazing.tv, and you can watch all of the episodes. You can binge them like it's a Netflix uh, special. Anyway, let's get into the interview with Dr. Joseph Michelli. Joseph, welcome to the show. It's so great to be back with you, Shep. And you are back. I believe this could be your fourth time maybe on the show. Yeah, I just keep writing books so I can hang out with the you. More so you so write, the more books you write, the more we'll have you on the show. No, I doubt. would just rather you call me sometime, but I'll write a book if I have to do that. That's the only reason I ever want to talk to you is because of the books. <laughs> and, and the audience can't see this, but sitting over your shoulder, you have... Uh, all your different uh, books, the Starbucks experience, the Airbnb way, uh, then and then you've got a, a prescription for excellence, and that I believe is the Ritz Carlton. Yes, no, yeah, there's the Ritz Carlton standard book. driven to delight. Yeah, driven delight Mercedes. Wow, how many books now? Twelve now, including Customer Magic. Yeah, that one. Thanks yeah, for uh, that's the most recent one. That's what we're going to talk about and. And I think a lot of our listeners know that I am a magician. And uh, I guess once you're a magician, darn good one, too. I've seen you pull off your magic tricks. Well, once. thanks. Thanks. I still practice. I still practice. So when I saw the book title Customer Magic, I was immediately intrigued. So this book, it, it, the, the full title, Customer Magic, The Macquarie Way, How to Reimagine Customer Experience to Transform Your Business, comes out right as this episode is being released on May 28th, 2024. I love the book because you've basically taken this company and created a gigantic case study. And there's two things in the book. And by the way, I'll let you talk in just a few minutes. It's my show, you know, I can do what I want, <laughs> right? So <laughs> I'm liking this better than when I talk. Go ahead. Right. Well, we're, 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 well, okay, I'll go. there's actually three things in the book. First of all, every chapter starts with a quote that uses the words magic in it. Everything from David Blaine to Tom Peters to people I've never heard of before. Um, I, I, I love this one. It, it's the very first chapter, Magic Lies and Challenging what's, What Seems Impossible by Carol Mosley Braun, who I have never heard of She's before. She's a U.S. senator. She was a U.S. senator. I should know that, but... Uh, you know, politics. So we stay away from politics here. But what, you know what? That quote, I think, is bipartisan and neutral. Exactly. So we maybe one of the things we agree on. But well, yeah, I David Blaine, quote. Tom Peters, a great. But then here's two other things I love about the book. Throughout the book, you challenge us with questions about how to use the material that's in the book. And then at the end, you give a summary of the main topics within each chapter. And the reason I like that is because I could just skip to the end. It's like the clip. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the, the reason I like that is seriously because you don't just read a book, you use the book. And yeah, is, I, uh, yeah it's perfect. a workbook. Yeah, I mean, there, for there, those sections, groups. yeah. The sections to reflect on are just a workbook sections as you're reading, like the, the content. And then I kind of need a triphasic pass, right? Like, tell me what you're going to tell me, tell me it, and then tell me what you told me. Uh, so the summaries are an intention to call out the the key things just to get you ready for the next chapter. Yep. I, so the, I want to go back to that quote on, on magic. And, and frankly, as a magician, you know this really well. The art of magic is really about the art of perception. It is about leaving in the perception of the the audience, the how did they do that sort of question, right? What was well, going on? Is that on? perception or deception? 
Well, it's deception, but it's deception with the intent of leaving them wow, right? There is definitely a wow perception when magic is done well. And all of us know that you re- there wasn't an elephant that you made materialize out of vapor, right? I know that's one of your smaller tricks, but, but the, there were, something happened elusively to us. Um, the key to business magic isn't that we want to create an illusion, right? We want to create a perception, an outcome that the customer is engaged and really feels that you cared about them. And, and that perception requires a craftsmanship that magicians like yourself who continue to work on your craft understand. It's not something you can leave to chance. So enough of that. I just, I really love that quote from a, a U.S. congressperson of all people. Well, let's dive into a business person who had a great quote and I just, it's sheer coincidence that I use this quote in a description uh, of an article that I just read by Annette Franz, who you probably know. I love Annette, yeah. Uh, And Annette wrote an article about, um, I know I'm going to get the title wrong, but here's the gist of it. And you may know, you quoted somebody in the book, not Annette, uh, that I think illustrates this point. And that is, we need to stop creating products for customers. Wait, no, we need to stop finding customers for our products. We need to start creating product for our customers. Um, but you have a quote from Howard Schultz in the book. And I said, this reminds me of a quote that I read. And I don't know if I, maybe yeah. I read it in one of your books. Uh, yeah, I use it a lot, I'm sure. Cause I went to work with Howard, you know, early in my first book on Starbucks, I did two of them. And the first time I worked with him, he said, we're not in the we're not in the coffee business, you know, serving people. We're in the people business serving coffee. I hope that's the same quote. That is um, the quote. Yes. <laughs> and I think I, it's really stuck with me all my whole life. It's not about the product. The product is our vector to create impact in the lives of humans, right? That's it. And uh, magic is a is a technique to create an experience in the lives of humans. Um, so to me, there's those similarities within the context of business. All right. So let's let's explain to the world that the Macquarie way is about, um, and I know chapter two is David and Aiden, and that's David and Aiden Tudhope, who are brothers who decide to take on a behemoth type of business, the yep. telco in Australia. Yep. And they said, uh, and I'll use your words, markets that are underserved and overcharged. That's why they decided to do this. It reminded me of uh, Sir Richard Branson, who decided to start Virgin Air because he felt the larger airlines kept, as he said it, giving the passengers or the customers the Mickey, which means this. (laughs) I think it's okay to say. I don't think that's a bad term, although it (laughs) implies... Today, everything's a bad term or nothing is a bad term, one of the two. So Uh, Yeah, no, the point's the same, right? And there's an identification. I got to tell you the backstory on this bit, Shep. I would only tell you this, but um, I remember... You're telling the world right um, And the world (laughs) vis-a-vis you. Uh, I remember getting a call from David to to Hope uh, many, many years ago. And he said, I just read the new gold standard about the Ritz-Carlton. And I would love to talk to you about customer experience. And I said, great. Where are you from? You could kind of tell from the accent. Um, And then he said, and I said, what sector are you in? He goes, I run a telco. And I thought, all right, Shep's pranking me now. I mean, somebody, one of my colleagues is pranking me, messing with my head. A telco gives a rat about customer experience, not in not in my lifetime. Um, and so I thought it was a prank call. It turns out that we stayed friends for years. And over the course of that time, I really saw their commitment to it. Their NPS scores are in that 90 percentile. So in Europe, people are really understand that they serve primarily a business audience. So they're mostly B2B. Uh, so, you know, if you're needing your, te- your, your, you're a small business, medium sized business, and you want your telecom provider, they were it. And then they expanded because of their incredible customer service. I think the early days it was just like, can you even read the bill? Right. That was one of the early things to deal with. Very much in keeping with books you've written on convenience and accessibility and transparency. Um, and so they, they took on all those things, served business customers really well. And lo and behold, they were given permission to do more things for business customers and expanded into cyber, expanded into cloud services, expanded. Now now they are the data centers. They're building lots and lots of data centers throughout Australia. Wow. And that's a fantastic David uh, versus Goliath story, because when you take a small little company and try to attack a big one, 
And think about, uh, I think you mentioned MCI in the book about yep. how they came and studied MCI because MCI decided to take on a small company. I won't tell you their name, but the initials are AT&T. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, so uh, I Can just- Can you draw me a picture, Shep? I'm trying to follow you here. <laughs> <laughs> but well, let's talk about what, uh, let's just go through some of the chapters and um, this is brand new, just coming out. I mm -hmm. wish I could tell you I spent 10 hours devouring this book, but actually I spent about an hour and a half devouring what I could just to get the gist of what this is about. And uh, I think this is, you know, back on the list, top 10 books that I've read this year. So, oh, um, wow, that'd be, yeah. that'd be something. You know, here's the thing about this book that makes it a little unusual. First, it's about a B2B, which is not really common. Yep. You and I know that a lot of the books that get written in this space, because I've written a lot of them, are in the B2C. It's sexier, it's edgier, um, different kind of dynamic to go to consumer than it is to serve a business. So I think that's kind of unique. It's also not a household name, which is different for me. I'm much more aligned. I want to do the books about uh, Ritz Carlton Mercedes. Uh, but I realize that most people aren't Ritz Carlton or Mercedes and those role models. I mean, we, how many times have we heard the Zappo story or the Ritz Carlton used as the examples, right? It's like I'm um, overdone. And I think the beauty of this, these are just hardworking people who dedicated themselves to, to focusing on those markets that were underserved and overcharged right. and constantly looking for solutions and some real innovation strategies that they deploy. Well, chapters three and four deal with really cool uh, ideas that I think, and, and if you were to sit and listen, and I know you do a lot of, of uh, where you're a speaker at these different conferences, uh, if you listen to the CEO and you pay attention, a lot of times you're talking about culture and their employees. And so chapters three and four focus on that. So let's start with what the secret culture sauce is for uh, the Macquarie yeah, the short answer is storytelling. I mean, the Ritz Carlton does it well, but they do it really well there. They dedicate a lot of resources. You want to be a great storytelling culture, you have to invest in story collection. You have to seed the the environment. You have to put people on it who are mining for your natural occurring stories in your environment. So they have a culture of storytelling. I think that's a big part of it. Um, so that would be one. And also the other one is they really have developed uh, a hiring scenario right like they are not just fogging the mirror hiring they're also not just doing what they originally did which is go and get the top five percent of you know people coming out of engineering programs uh, they really now are looking for that hungry humble smart combination and they're also looking for the customer service gene which they think needs to be there and can't be if mama didn't put it in or god didn't put it in you can't you can't manufacture it so they do a pretty good job of behavioral interviewing to identify people who have that yeah, one of my favorite uh, ideas to share in the hiring process is a question that Nordstrom asks in their interviews. And it's a simple question. What does customer service mean to you? Yeah. And there's 100, 200, 500 good answers. They're, yeah. they're all right. There's a few that are wrong. And they instantly end the interview. <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's very similar in Macquarie. And, and I think they would add to that, you know, if, you, if something goes wrong from a technology perspective, who does your family con call? And mm -hmm. if you're the tech expert and they don't call you because you make them feel stupid, then you shouldn't be working for us, right? Wow. Like you've got yeah. to be the person who's approachable and who can help solve problems when you're the expert in a way that doesn't demean the person asking. Mm -hmm. Yep. Perfect. Hey, let's take a quick break. When we come back, I want to talk more about uh, how this company innovates. Uh, the Noah's Ark of Innovation was a very intriguing title. Uh, and uh, just there's so much that we can learn from this company. Like you said, not a household name, but uh, I would call it rock star techniques and tactics and strategies to build a company that was not just successful, but competed against some of the largest competition anybody could ever have. And uh, any size company, small, big, B2C, B2B, when they're competing against anybody and the other company seems to be larger, bigger, faster, more agile, have more money, how do we compete? Well, this is a good place to start and learn. The book, again, is titled Customer Magic. It's available everywhere Amazon sells books and bookstores as well. We're coming right back. Don't go away. One of my favorite sayings is that customer service isn't a department. It's a philosophy. And it's a philosophy that must be embraced by everyone in the organization all the time, and that's 24-7. So if customer service is important to you, and I know it is, then you will love our virtual training, the ultimate on-demand customer service and experience training program that you can access anytime, 
anywhere. Now, the course content applies to everyone, regardless of position and responsibility, from senior executives to the most recently hired and everyone in between. You'll discover tips, ideas, and strategies that won't cost your company a fortune, but will produce what I call moments of magic, those positive experiences, and it will happen at every level of your organization. So go to Customer Service VT, that's V as in virtual, T as in training, that's CustomerServiceVT.com. It's time to get customer focused. You're listening to Amazing Business Radio with best-selling author and customer service and business expert, Shep Hyken. We are back on Amazing Business Radio talking to the amazing Joseph A. Michelli, my friend, my colleague, fellow customer service and experience expert, fellow amazing author, best-selling books, some of the greatest books on the subject of customer service and experience, and the latest book, Customer Magic, The Macquarie Way, How to Reimagine Customer Experience to Transform Your Business. And at the beginning of our interview, you mentioned B2B, and a lot of companies that are written about are not B2B. But every customer, regardless even if you sell B2B and you're in the vendor procurement side of the business where you're buying, you're still a consumer, and you are probably comparing the experience you're having with this company to the best experience you've had with a consumer brand or a hospitality brand, such as some of the books behind you, the Ritz Carlton, the Starbucks way, the Airbnb. So I think this so much applies to everybody. I want to jump into this concept of innovation and we are going through the whole book and having fun with it, but these are just tips. It's like you're seeing the iceberg, just a tip. There's a whole lot going underneath Noah's Ark um, which, by the way, was the first cruise ship of all time. Did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> wow. They had a comedian on the yeah. cruise ship. They did. Yeah. His name was Shecky of Nazareth. And oh. uh, after 40 days and 40 nights of cruising, he oh. went to Noah and he said, I have had tough audiences, but these these people, are, no, they're not people. They're animals. <laughs> <laughs> and you can, uh, thank you, Shecky, Shecky Green. That's yeah. what you, <laughs> that That's where that came from. You remembered that too. Well, I toured with Shecky Green uh, when I was doing some work with Anheuser Busch. I was like the opening act for Shecky. Wow! When I did now my that, magic, there's something to to be put your hat on right there. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's talk about Noah, the Noah yeah, Ark. Way I don't of... even know where to go now. <laughs> Noah's Ark. So here's what happened. David Tudahope uh, studied at Harvard and. Uh, and I think he learned very early on to be super inquisitive. And I, I, what I found about him in this whole Noah's Ark thing is they basically go to countries that are ahead of Australia in terms of technology in certain ways. And they're looking at how this is playing in those areas. And then they're determining, will it play at home? Um, and so, and they bring a cross-functional team. That's where the Noah's Ark thing comes from. And they go and they meet with all kinds of suppliers and vendors and customers in other countries and listen to the best and brightest and share tips on how to drive NPS. So they're given back uh, in those conversations, but essentially they're looking for cutting edge on trends and then doing the a lot of work before they go and a lot of work afterwards to determine if there's a business case for it to invest money in. And that's what led them to doing data centers in Australia. I mean, like owning a data center is like a no brainer now, like you'd wanna have, we'd like to renovate some land for data centers, a lot of money to be made there because the cloud lives there. But um, yeah, it was uh, the first of its kind in Australia and it was because they vetted the idea in a Noah's Ark. And something you said, they took uh, different members from different teams, uh, different parts of the company, hence all the two of each animal. By the way, I, I tell it uh, in my speeches, I'll say something like, how many How many of each animal did Moses take aboard the ark? And people say two. Some people say seven. I don't know where that comes from. The correct answer, by the way, is zero, right? Because it was Moses took It no was one. exactly. I, I do a listening skills uh, activity around with you i pay a lot of attention i know I'm so drifting, but, but, I know. but this is why you know the diversity uh of the team can really make a difference if all you did was bring your best it people or your best engineers you are not going to get the perspective back to a word you used earlier uh that perspective from people that might be thinking a completely different way so the yeah. variety of thought becomes really really important Yep, that's a, a big part of it, I think. And and also making sure it's relevant for your audience. Just because yep. it's playing in Poughkeepsie doesn't mean it's going to play uh, in your town. Yep. 
So let's go to another topic. Uh, and this is a fun one, zigging when others zag. And it's not quite what you think it is. Yeah, there's so much of this is, you know, obviously, just because somebody goes in one position, and you take a contrarian position, that's not what this is. I mean, that there is a place for the, the rebels against all causes, right? But this is a lot more of just constantly being in a challenger mindset and questioning the status quo about virtually everything. We take so much for granted because it's always been the case. I'm right now working on a book in healthcare and you know, I, I start with why do we have to wait so long in waiting rooms? Why do we have to wait in a waiting room and an exam room? I mean, like questions like that, we don't, unless you ask them, we're gonna always be in waiting rooms and exam rooms. You know, right. why can't- Because the that's the way we've always done it. Waiting room, right? yeah. Why can't the provider just come to you in the waiting room and take you back to the exam room when it's your turn? You know, why wait two places? So, I, you know, there's a lot of that kind of thing that, that Macquarie's about. They just ask, do we really have to? Let's be so untelco. Let's do it yeah. the way, you know, how a, would a telco do it? And then let's think about how we could do it opposite of that. Right, and, and that was a hashtag that was in that chapter, it was, uh, they put the word on in front of a topic. So yeah. like that's so on telco hashtag. So on telco. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and that's just aspiration. I mean, we we want to come up with a different experience because that experience is never cared about customers in its traditional sense. You know, what, here's a, a fun one that we do. And it's kind of just so it relates to something else. You know, we, we have a speaking fee. Most people have a speaking fee. What would happen if instead of charging a regular speaking fee, we charged a million dollars for a speaking fee? And we start thinking, okay, what would we do differently with a client that was willing to pass a million dollars? And then you yeah. say, well, why wouldn't we do that for somebody that's willing to pay us what we normally charge? Uh, very yeah. clever. Uh, yeah, I, I think it was, I was trying to remember who, who had the the quote you know he went up to a woman at the beginning of a, an evening and said will you sleep with me for a million dollars and and she said oh george bernard shaw she goes of course not what do you you know and so he came you know, i guess he asked her for ten dollars at the beginning of the night i'm sorry i'll get this right uh, ten dollars at the beginning of the night she said now be no. careful yeah, she said so no george said, burns no. the old so then Canadian. so then she came back at a million dollars and she said uh what do you take me for? And she said, yeah, you know, when she said yes to a million dollars, she said, now we're just talking price. I got that all backwards. So uh, let's just leave that one alone. But the point is, we have to establish ourselves in a commitment to something big. And then if we do that, uh, then we can deliver against that. And I right. think your example is a much better one than my failed. <laughs> well, George Burns, uh, maybe that was back in the day when you could be a little politically incorrect and say things like that. But there's actually George Bernard Shaw. At least I know. Oh, George Bernard Shaw. Yeah. Okay. Not so George Bernard the comedian. When you could, yeah. 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 So. Well, well, he's the philosopher and the author, of course, then it's okay for him to no. But I, but we get it. It's, it, you know, it's, it, you know, you just, now we're just haggling about price. Right. And yeah. I think he starts at the evening of the evening. We sleep with me for a million dollars. She said, no. Yeah. Uh, she said, yes. And then he comes back at the later in the evening and said, how about for 10? And that's, was only for, price right so that's the <laughs> wow uh, that should be uh okay. yeah so when it comes to uh joke telling just the writing the book with you Shep. Be work really really well for you shecky i'm going with shecky and shep shecky of nazareth and shecky green all right we're almost to the end of the interview uh i always ask like what's one last nugget of wisdom but i'm gonna turn this a little bit and say what's one more nugget from the book that we should really pay attention to what would you like to share yeah i think fundamentally it is this insatiable curiosity that constantly keeps this brand fresh we got a ceo that's the founder who went public and continues to lead this organization when quite frankly most of the time a founder after going public is a liability to an organization he continues to create value mainly because he's insatiable in looking for new ideas, new things to continue to create value for those he serves. So that's the one thing from the book. All right, if you are a leader and you are listening to this show, take that away uh, because you do not wanna become irrelevant when you get big. You wanna figure out how to stay in the game. And this guy seems to have done it well. So. Uh, Joseph, I'm going to take away that I need to learn how to do jokes better. So that's my growth. <laughs> tip that, Shep, thanks for that. Uh, and thank you, Shep. You know what? Can I just say this really quickly? Because you are so good about giving this form to all of us who work in this industry. You're one of the nicest, hardest working guys in our industry. Oh, thank you. And I absolutely love you, my brother. And I am so appreciative of the time and what you've done to elevate CX writ large and to spend time with you. 
Wow. Thank you very, very much. Coming from you, that means a whole lot. And by the way, the feeling is mutual. So, uh, all right. Again, the book is titled Customer Magic, The Macquarie Way, How to Reimagine Customer Experience to Transform Your Business by my good buddy, Joseph A. Michelli, PhD, CSP, which stands for Certified Speaking Professional, which is what we are. Uh, Joseph, thanks again for being on the show. That wraps it up. Another episode of Amazing Business Radio. We will be back next week with another interview. And until that time, this is Chef Hyken reminding you to always be amazing. 